Hillary Clinton is back in the news. Again, she just will not leave under any circumstances. And no matter what, she cannot be pushed out. No one will push Hillary Clinton off. I mean, she, she, she's like the, the Jennifer Hudson in Dreamgirls, right? She is telling you she's not going. She, we're the best man she'll ever know, and she's not going. So Hillary Clinton is just going to stick around, and now she's going to be talking about gun control. So she is praising the Parkland teens. She's saying they are changing the conversation. This is the great myth of the left, is that the conversation is routinely being changed, even though the conversation is exactly the same as it ever was. Here's Hillary Clinton, the one of the, the worst, not one of the worst, the worst candidate in American history who will not leave, still talking about gun control in Parkland. Very exciting to see uh, the... The movement started by the students from Parkland about uh, taking on the NRA and uh, the gun lobby. So what we've got to do is to say, we're for the assault weapons ban, we're for universal background checks, we are going to hold elected officials accountable, and we're going to vote against those who will not agree with those particular policies. And I think we've got a real shot uh, to defeat the NRA again. But the problem is it never ends. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I fell asleep. Hillary Clinton was talking, my bad. Okay, so we're back. But she's not the only one who's pushing the idea that the gun control issue is now on the table and Democrats finally have the advantage because of the Parkland teens. Ooh, the Parkland teens. Okay, so one of these folks who's pushing this idea is Nicholas Kristof, who is one of the worst columnists in America. He writes for the New York Times op-ed page, which of course means that by definition, he's one of the worst columnists in America. The New York Times op-ed page is a trash heap of misery and, and stupidity. But in any case, here is what he writes. He has an entire column this week talking about the Second Amendment, and it's called How to Win an Argument About Guns. So I thought to myself, well, if Nicholas Kristof knows how to win an argument about guns, maybe we'd better read those arguments because maybe he's finally given a guide to the left on how they can defeat the Second Amendment agenda. Wow, I mean, maybe he's finally broken the code. It turns out not so much. So here's what he writes. Tragically, predictably, infuriatingly, we're again mourning a shooting, this time at YouTube's headquarters, even as the drive for gun safety legislation has stalled in Washington. Polls show that nine out of 10 Americans favor basic steps like universal background checks before gun purchases, but the exceptions are the president and a majority in Congress. Now, this alone should make you stop and think. Well, why is it that if nine out of 10 people think one thing, but a majority of people in Congress who are elected by those same people Think another thing, why that disparity? Well, the answer is, of course, that nine out of 10 people do not support universal background checks. Nine out of 10 people are told a slogan called universal background checks. And then when they are told that this means that you will not be able to give your gun to your kid, right? When this means that you will not be able to buy a gun for your brother, when this means that you won't be able to lend a gun to your friend to go hunting, they go, well, that seems weird. Like that's, I'm, I'm not up for that. So all these polls mean nothing in any case. Nicholas Kristof continues, usually pundits toss out their, their own best arguments while ignoring the other sides. But today I'm going to try something new and to engage directly with the arguments made by gun advocates. Quote, you liberals are in a panic over guns, but look at the numbers. Any one gun is less likely to kill a person than any one vehicle, but we're not traumatized by cars and we don't try to ban them. So here's how Nicholas Kristof responds to this claim. It is true that any particular car is more likely to be involved in a fatality than any particular gun, but cars are actually a perfect example of the public health approach we should apply to guns. We don't ban cars, but we do work hard to take a dangerous product and regulate it to limit the damage. Um, there are already federal background checks on guns. You cannot own a machine gun. States across the country have gun legislation that restricts magazine size. I was recently at a gun shop in California. And in California, if you buy a rifle, you cannot actually have a replaceable magazine. You literally have to unscrew every magazine that you use. You use a magazine, you use the limit, you have to unscrew the magazine. You have to take out a screwdriver and release the magazine before putting in a new magazine and re-screwing it in. Okay, so these gun laws exist all over the United States and Kristoff apparently doesn't know that. He says, we do that through seatbelts and airbags with cars, through speed limits and highway barriers, through driver's licenses and insurance requirements, through crackdowns on drunken driving and texting while driving. I once calculated that since 1921, we have reduced the auto fatality rate per 100 million miles driven by 95%. Sure, we could have just said that cars don't kill people, people kill people, or we could have said it's pointless to regulate cars because then bicyclists will just run each other down. Instead, we relied on evidence and data to reduce the carnage from cars. Why isn't that a model for guns? Well, here's the part that's hilarious about this entire argument that he's now proclaiming. He's saying that we've done a great job with cars, except that cars still kill more people than guns. Right? So how, is that, how does that follow? Right? If the idea is that all these regulations on cars have made them less deadly, why is it that guns, as a percentage of, of the population, 
You know, the, the, the guns, the number of guns in American society has increased wildly since 1994. And yet the gun death rate in the United States has decreased wildly since 1994. He just sort of skips over that part. Okay, Nicholas Kristof continues. Because of the Second Amendment, the Constitution doesn't protect vehicles, but it does protect my right to a gun. He says, yes, but courts have found the Second Amendment does not prevent sensible regulation. There is no constitutional objection to, say, universal background checks to obtain a gun. It's crazy that 22% of guns are obtained without a check. Again, he's right on this one. Okay, there is nothing in the Constitution that says you cannot have a universal background check. It is also politically unpalatable because a lot of people don't want a universal background check. And then he says, whoa. Again, this is Kristoff going back and forth trying to explain why all the conservative arguments on guns are wrong. He says, whoa. You're inflating the gun violence numbers by including suicides. Almost two thirds of those gun deaths are suicides. And the blunt reality is that if someone wants to kill himself, he'll find a way. It's not about guns. Because actually, that's not true. Scholars have found that suicide barriers on bridges, for example, prevent jumpers and don't lead to a significant increase in suicides elsewhere. OK, first of all, there are like five jumpers in the United States. OK, the number of people who die by jumping off bridges in the United States every year is really, really low. So that's not a great sample size. And he says, likewise, almost half of suicides in Britain used to be by asphyxiating oneself with gas from the oven. When Britain switched to a less lethal oven gas, the suicides by oven plummeted and there was little substitution by other methods. So it is about guns. Well, no, that's like saying that it was that suicide was about ovens in Britain. Okay, suicide is much more common on a per capita basis in many countries in Europe than it is in the United States where guns are not nearly as prevalent. The suicide rates in Japan continue to be quite high, for example, and guns are essentially forbidden in that society. The evidence on the to, to pretend that guns are the cause of suicide is just inane. Okay, suicide is, is something social scientists have been studying for nigh on 200 years, right? really since Compt. And they're still waiting to figure out exactly how this functions. People don't understand why people commit suicide. There's no good one answer to it. This suggests it's all about the guns. It's just dumb. He says, no, it's more about our violent culture. The Swiss and Israelis have large numbers of firearms, and they don't have our levels of gun violence. He says, yes, there's something to that. America has underlying social problems, and we need to address them with smarter economic and social policies. But we magnify the toll when we make it easy for troubled people to explode with AR-15s rather than with pocket knives. Well, there's not a lot of evidence to that, and that doesn't rebut the supposition, which is that a good person with a gun stops a bad person with a gun, and if a bad person gets a hold of a gun, you don't want to be armed with a pocket knife. In fact, gun violence rates vary widely across American society, and if we're really looking to save lives, maybe we should stop with the gun confiscation rhetoric and start talking instead about how exactly we should stop all of these underlying social problems that are causing the crime in the first place. And finally, Nicholas Kristof writes, you liberals freak out about guns. If you have a swimming pool or a bathtub, that's more dangerous to neighborhood kids than a gun is. Kids under age 14 are much more likely to die from drowning than from firearms. So why this crusade against guns, but not against bathtubs and pools? So here's Kristof's response. Your numbers are basically right, but only because young children routinely swim and take baths, but don't regularly encounter firearms. Right, because the vast majority of people with firearms lock them up. There are three hundred million firearms in the United States. There are 100 million gun owners in the United States. My guess is that there are fewer pools than that in all of the United States because 300 million pools would be a lot of pools in the United States. I don't think there are that many pools in the United States. Okay, so he says, look at the picture of the population as a whole. Overall, 3,600 Americans drown each year while 36,000 die from guns. Yes, including suicides. There's one more reason to be talking more about gun safety than about pool safety. Well, no, that's more of a reason to be talking and to be talking about why guns should stay away from kids and why, uh, again, if we're, uh, uh, so apparently we're not allowed to talk about deaths from cars because something, and we shouldn't talk about deaths from pools because guns, gun deaths are more common than pool deaths, even though if we talk about guns in pools, then we come up with the conclusion that pools are more dangerous to children than guns. None of this makes any sense. Finally, he says, note that a backyard pool isn't going to be used to mug a neighbor or to invade a nearby school. Schools don't have drills for an active pool situation. Okay, that's an emotional argument, not really a logical one. He said, while some 200,000 guns are stolen each year, it's more difficult to steal a pool and use it for a violent purpose. Okay, so now he's calling for a full-scale gun confiscation and then telling us why we shouldn't worry about that. Okay, so again, Nicholas Kristof defeating his own arguments. Well done there, Nicholas Kristof. Just strong stuff from the New York Times columnist. David French has an excellent column on all of this. And, and he points out that all of the straw man that Nicholas Kristof erects here uh, do not do not even withstand Nicholas Kristof's attempt to to over to to uh, undercut uh, to undercut those arguments. That the arguments that he that he props up there are actually stronger than his counter arguments. Cr French says Kristof won't win his argument because he can't. We've proven we can decrease crime while we protect the Second Amendment and expand access to guns. We know we can reduce suicides without restricting any person's right to self defense. We know we have fewer suicides than many other developed countries, even as we have more guns. 
Moreover, we know that various so-called common sense gun control measures wouldn't have prevented a single recent shooting. And David French certainly is right about all of that. 